Hello, my name is Casey Reitzma. I work here at MP Systems. Um, I'm a journeyman lineman. I've been a foreman here for a long time and I, now I've been a general foreman for three or four years. Um, today we're going to talk about our cutout and arrestor changeout program that we do here. Um, we do this for a lot of different utilities um, around Wisconsin. Um, this is kind of a unique job. Um, it's a relatively simple job. It poses a lot of safety hazards. Um, it can be done very effectively, very safely, but there's a number of things that you want to watch out for when you're doing this type of work. It can get very monotonous after a while, um, so it's one of those jobs where you really got to keep your mind on task. You really got to stay focused on this job. Um, every time you go up in the air, it may seem like you're repeating yourself over and over day after day to change these cutouts, but you really got to go over this with a fine tooth comb and make sure that everything is inspected before we do anything. We're providing for our own protection and um, anything else that comes along the way. Okay, so once we get out to the job site, we have all our cutouts loaded up for the day. Um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to have a detailed uh, safety plan um, before we go any work and do any air. We're going to fill out our JHAs for the day and any other safety topics that got to be covered for the day. Um, it's very important to know where you are, your address, what feeders you're working on, just in case there was ever a problem. Um, we just got to have all our bases covered with that. So once we get up in the air, we're going to um, first thing we're going to do is take any rubber goods with us. Um, please excuse the crudity of this model. This is kind of what we got available to us. and uh, We want to do it at ground level just uh, for good video purposes and whatnot. Um, normally this would be on a stirrup, this would be on a pole, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet in the air. But just for ease of video production today, we kind of made this little easy mock-up here and put it down on the ground. So, as I was saying, once you get in the air, you want to provide for your own protection. That's the most important thing, okay? Um, this particular construction here, this is typical for a, for a 8KV system in southeast Wisconsin, um, where you got an arrestor on the other side of the arm, and you got your cutout feeding possibly a transformer, possibly a riser, a lot of different scenarios what this would feed. Um, newer stuff, it's sometimes there's a lot more spacing between the primary and neutral, so it's a lot easier to work on, a lot safer, and everything like that. So, 8KV system in southeast Wisconsin. So, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is provide for any protection. If you got to throw line hoses up here, or if you got a center phase, if it's a three phase application, you want to cover up that center phase real good so you're out of the harm's way. Cover up this stuff, throw a line hose up there. Um, blankets, we, we a lot of times throw blankets on the arm so the jumpers and stuff are protected. Um, and our biggest thing here, our biggest threat that we have on this are these grounds. Oh, these pesky grounds. So. We're going to be macking this cutout out, and this should typically be stapled to the arm over here. Um, <clears throat> before you do any work, you want to make sure you get your grounds cleared up. Um, it's happened in the past for different linemen over the years, you know, the one thing that gets guys in trouble is their grounds. I know Dave Veith did a safety video a few years ago about grounds and how dangerous they can be, and they can really get a guy hurt or killed, so we want to make sure that we clear up our ground. So a lot of times what we do is we, we would reach over here by the pole ground and cut this ground free and peel this out of the way, way out of the way. If you had to, you could take your ground right off that arrestor and just get it out of there. Um, another thing we can do if we're going to be up here is we can disconnect our lightning arrestor just, just to eliminate another hazard. The biggest thing here is eliminate as many hazards as you possibly can. In an ideal world, right, you'd be able to just come over here, open up this cutout, take an outage on whatever piece of equipment or line fuse that we're doing this on and change your cutout and then re-energize everything. But let's be honest, nowadays in today's society, everybody wants to have their electricity and it's just not feasible to take an outage on everything we do. So we have to do it this way. Um, hey everybody, I just want to drive the one point home that I don't think I talked about enough. Um, if we need to take outages do, on pieces of equipment or lines to do this job safely, let's please take an outage if possible. Um, I don't want anybody to get hurt um, or anything like that. So please, if we can take an outage, take an outage. Thank you. So once you get your, your hazards cleared up, your grounds out of the way, 
any rubber protection that you need on there, line hoses, blankets, cutout covers. If this was another three phase application and there was another cutout over here, you'd want to put a cutout cover on that or a blanket over that. Once we have all that out of the way, we're going to jump into inspecting our cutout and making sure that nothing is going to happen to this cutout while we change it. Now, keep in mind this would normally be a, a porcelain cutout. We're changing the porcelain cutouts because they are known to fail. Um, sometimes they're very obvious when they're going to fail. Okay, over here we have some cutouts, some porcelain cutouts that have been changed in the past. Um, as you can see, two of these are completely broken half. Um, they were together when we went in the air. We took the jumpers off, unbolted them, and they literally fell apart in our hands. So a few things to look at, this is a really good example of one, is uh, hopefully the camera can pick this up. But this guy here has all kinds of hairline fractures in this porcelain here. And anytime you see that, you know that this cutout is failing. Um, this one is particularly bad. I've seen them um, less cracks than this and just fail. Um, so what'll happen is it'll track across the cross arm or across the cutout bracket and actually start the pole on fire. This one was getting hot because all the insides were starting to melt out of it. So these are definitely a known problem. Um, you always want to inspect these things really well and that's what happened. Another thing you really want to be careful of is you're up in the air with this broken porcelain. Now porcelain is extremely sharp. Right, so if you are handling this stuff with your rubber gloves on, um, you want to make sure that you're not getting a cut in your glove. You want to test your gloves. You want to make sure you didn't damage your rubber gloves at all, because we all know that that would be terrible. So this one again is this one's not quite as. I mean, obviously it's broken, but there's some really fine cracks down in here that if you get in there, the camera can get in there. You can see them, but. Um, you know if this was still together that would be hard to see so you really got to make sure you inspect these cutouts really well and we don't want to be taking anything apart that um, may fail as we're working on it another thing you want to really be careful is these these grounding brackets these grounding brackets are designed to go on riser poles three phase or single phase um, and what they do is they provide a spot for the trouble men or us to ground um, an, a riser or an underground cable so the URD guys can work on it or we can work on it. One thing that we found is these were not, some of these were not installed properly. This particular one, the jumper was actually outside. The jumper is actually supposed to be in these grooves and then this clamshell is supposed to go over the top of that and tighten that jumper in there. We came across this one a, a few months back and it wasn't installed properly and you can imagine if a guy were to grab onto that and start stripping his wire to put his jumper on or his Mac on, that could easily fall out of there and cause an, a flash or an outage or anything, really. Um, so that's one thing that you got, another thing you really got to pay attention to. Um, so let's take a walk back over here. <clears throat> and we'll kind of go through the steps real quick about changing these cutouts. So keep in mind, we already got all our protection up there. We're all, all our rubber gloves and sleeves are on. We got all our line hoses on, our blankets, our cutout covers. And when our grounds are all cleared up, we took care of that earlier. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to strip our, our jumpers. Now this happens to be number six. That's what I had available when I made this little um, a jumper or this little demo model that we have here. Um, a lot of times this would be number four. Um, it could be one out. One out's very common. It could also even be number six or 5kv wire and hopefully it's not 5kv wire because that is a real bear to strip especially in the winter time so make sure you got a sharp knife um, so when you get ready to do this before I strip that I always give these a good tug and make sure that these these uh, jumpers coming from the line and going to our piece of equipment or our riser are tight um, the last thing you want to be doing is stripping this and actually pull that that jumper out of that cutout that could cause an outage it could cause a flash you could unexpectedly drop that and get it into a ground that's just something we do not want to do so always make sure that before you strip these you got a good tight connection on there okay so now for our jumper wire a lot of times they'll just use a coily mac like this uh, number four will will do um, one thing in particular that you just need to watch out for when you're using a number four jumper is 
Just because this thing was good for a couple days doesn't mean it's going to be good all the time. Always inspect your jumpers. Make sure your hotline clamps are good and you're going to provide for a good clean connection. Also, these get moved around like this, you know, when you're moving these and taking these on and off the wire, bouncing around the truck. Always make sure that you don't have a couple of broken strands in here and causing this jumper to fail. That would be terrible if that happened as well. So we got our stuff stripped. We're going to go ahead and put our jumper on. Now this is when you're going to need to be a lineman and every one of these poles is kind of a specific task. Every single one of these is going to be different. You as a lineman have to decide, am I going to put it on the top side first, the bottom side? You got to take all your hazards into consideration. This is not a factory job. Every situation is different. You have to provide for your your own safety so whatever is going to be the most efficient way for you to do it and the safest way to do this me personally i like to put my jumper on either top side or bottom side deciding the uh um, depending on where i am on the pole and where i can get the bucket to or if i'm working off the pole if i was working off the pole everything would have to be in here um, it's nice when you're in a bucket because you're on the outside of everything. I like to put my jumper on and then go back and give everything a tweak and make sure my jumper's tight. Making sure that when you have that jumper on there that you um, are keeping it in the clear and not getting into anything. Okay, so we got our jumper installed. Now one thing that I want to do after I install my jumper is I like to open the cutout door. Okay, and I'll take this door and I'll hang it out on the outside of my bucket or on the ground <laughs> or wherever. But that way there, we separated these two. Okay, they're still energized obviously because we have the Mac on there. But then when we take this off, we take our top side out of the cutout. And again, a clothes pin works really good in this situation, a sling rope or a piece of tape if it's in close uh, quarters like this to keep everything safe. Now that we took that off, we opened that door, this is de-energized, the top side of this cutout. Anytime you can get something de-energized, in my opinion, it's the better way to do it. But again, that's kind of a lineman choice. <clears throat> Just gotta make sure your Mac is on before you take that off. And then you could take this off and you can bend that coily however you need to bend it to take your cutout off, grab a wrench, and change your cutout, put the new cutout on, give everything a little snoggy snog. Tight is tight, right? <clears throat> Go ahead and reassemble your cutout. Um, reverse how you took it apart. Again, whichever one here is going to be the easiest for you, whether it's top side or bottom side. That's personal preference and and situational preference too. Every situation is different. Again, sometimes it might have to be the top side. Sometimes it might have to be the bottom side. Go ahead and grab your top jumper. In this case, <clears throat> let's reinstall that into the cutout. Go ahead and put your top jumper on. Give everything a snug. There. So, biggest thing here now is don't take that Mac off until you have that door installed. Oops. Until you have your door installed. Okay, you got to make sure that your door is in there so they don't have any unplanned outages. Then you're just taking your jumper off. Right there. And your other jumper, other end, keeping this end in the clear while you remove this jumper. There. Now your cutout has been changed. Um, Again, this can be done safely, but you really got to look at it. You really got to take your time and you really got to just be safe about it. Um, there's no sense hurrying. 
Rushing doesn't do anything except get somebody hurt. Um, anybody that's worked with me before in the past knows that I am not a fan of running. Everything is done in a nice methodical uh, way. Speed will come. For the younger guys that are just starting out with this, it, it might take you longer than an experienced guy. But it, that speed will come. That efficiency will come later on in life as you gain more experience. One thing that I forgot to mention before is when we were disassembling our ground off our arrest or under our arm is I've seen this before in a situation this ground wire is up against this cutout bracket and that is really dangerous. That's So when I was saying before in the earlier parts of this video about grounds, now this would be rubbing on here and you know after 20 or 30 years that, that uh, insulation would be off that wire rendering this at ground potential. Now you put your Mac across this, this is a grounded bracket. You're inches from disaster right there. So make sure that these grounds, I cannot say that enough, grounds will get you in trouble every single time. So make sure your grounds are always covered up or cut free out of the way before you Mac anything out. Okay, so now that cutout's been changed. So. As you can see, this work can be done. It can be done safely. It can be done efficiently. Um, the biggest thing is we don't want anybody rushing. And we don't want to take any chances. You know, there's a million poles out there. And there's a lot of these porcelain cutouts there that got to be changed. If for some reason you cannot get that cutout changed for some sort of unforeseen circumstance. Um, say there's bees or wasps swarming the pole. Say there's poison ivy all over the pole or anything else like that. Any unforeseen circumstance that that day you cannot change that pole or change that cutout on that pole. That is not the end of the world. We'll come back to it another day. And if it can't be done, we'll turn it into the utility and they can worry about it when the cutout fails or take an outage or something like that. The biggest thing is we don't want anybody getting hurt. Um, in closing, I would say the biggest thing about this cutout work is it can get very monotonous after a while. So you have to make sure your head is in the game at all times and doing this stuff. We want to inspect the heck out of these things. We want to make sure that we're putting our jumpers on properly. We want to make sure that um, we're not taking any unplanned outages. We want to make sure that we're skipping cutouts that can't be done for whatever reason. Um, this job can be done. It can be done safely. And um, thank you very much and have a great day.